Hello and welcome to the latest episode of the Board Masters with me, Chris Mullins. Um, Stacey and I are back again to do our review of this war of mine and just give our thoughts on the game. Mm -hmm. As ever, the review structure will follow, well, the structure that I've established in the previous reviews so the five components, uh, the five categories, sorry, of art style and theme, component quality, accessibility, replayability and gameplay. Uh, so what are your thoughts on the art style and the theme, Stace? Well, we said this um, board is beautifully styled, isn't it? Um, it yes. looks like a, you know, something out of a video game style look where it's been. Well, it is a perfect mm -hmm. adaptation of the base you have, or one of the bases you can have in the video game. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it does a great job of capturing that. And obviously the fact that it's double sided, mm -hmm. so we get double the art style for the yeah. cost of the game. And we've got, we've got a smaller, smaller a smaller building. This is the advanced side of the board, so it's a bit harder. You have less choice of what you want to do, I think. But yeah, yeah. Uh, it really captures the the video game art style, which I mentioned uh, really, really well, and I think. The sort of dark, almost feeling about it really captures the theme as well. It's where it really matches the tone of the game. And so this is just the colour choice, even, isn't it? The palette. That's what the word I was yeah. trying to think of. The colour palette. Yeah. That they've chosen for everything. Yeah, it is. It is dark. It's hard to see at sometimes. You're just there looking and double checking what's in each room, and that's yeah. probably how it would be if you were in this sort of world. Well, yeah, I mean, these houses have been Definitely. shelled and destroyed. They're living in a war zone, and thankfully, I will never, hopefully never have to experience that. And, I mean, the horror these people live in in these environments. And, you know, that carries through in the theme as well. It's, mm. as we mentioned in previous videos, it, it is absolutely miserable, the theme. It, it's... It's brutal with some of the events in the scripts, like we had that woman who was obviously being sort of gang raped and then probably killed. Yeah, and um, to decide whether to intervene or not. Yeah, and we had another um, one where, of recovering a dead body or not. And yeah. It's a very weighty moral decisions that there isn't really normally when you're playing games with a with a moral decision there's sort of a, an obvious good and a bad choice yeah. or or a good and evil choice whereas with this it's very much shades of gray and even the good choice is generally a pretty depressing, depressing yeah. choice to have and you know that i think that makes it even more poignant and effective when apparently the game was certainly the video game was based off interviews from survivors of the Sarajevo conflict so obviously you know a lot of it is rooted in in real life mm -hmm. and yeah that's just a very depressing experience and but in a very very good way and it's trying to get you to I guess they're trying to get you to understand what it is going to be like or what other yeah people have experienced yeah it's a it's life. an experience as such it's, yeah. it's not something you do it's not a traditional board game that you play for fun, it's no. something to have an experience of, yeah. To evoke other emotions and yeah. Definitely. I mean in terms of the art style outside of the board, there's not a lot of art in the game. It's obviously it's very card based. And I think even the cards themselves don't apart from the character cards which have a picture of their face on Yeah. Them. Like most of them the chapter cards and the objective cards and the colour cards and even all the ones for the exploration, it's just text. Mm. Uh, even like even the residents and the raid ones, they they say hoodlums or yeah, they haven't got a picture, or, but they don't really have art. So yeah. but again, that fits the theme of the game. It doesn't. It keeps a mystery by almost keeping everything vague and dark and. I suppose it's trying to evoke your own imagination. Absolutely. Yeah. So it's like a story. You fill in the gaps yourself. Yeah. So I think, for me anyway, art style and theme is a really big win in this game. I think it's fantastic. 
in the most depressing way possible. <laughs> uh, onto component quality. Obviously, we've already mentioned a few things that the game is largely card based mm. and there's not a lot of art. So, I mean, they're good quality cards, but they are just cards. They are just cards at the end of the day. The board is great. We've already said that we love the board. Obviously, the miniatures uh, are the people. The people, yeah, are fantastic, I think. They've got nice detail in them. It's yeah. such a small miniature. And obviously, Awaken Rams make the game and, and they're famous for their, their minis, but this game was one of the, I think, probably the first big one that they came out with. So I think the minis have definitely improved over the years with things like Etherfields and stuff that are incredibly special. Mm. But obviously, they could be a lot more creative with the theme for Etherfields than they can for this, which is a bit more grounded. Um, in terms of the other components, really like the the, the actual component components. So the little the tiny um, like nuts, aren't they? Yeah. The, and the bits of wood. Yeah, and the water beads and, water and beads. things. They're, they're, they 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 just feel great. And I mean, the cardboard tokens for the rest are a bit meh, but I mean, they're cardboard tokens. You can't expect too much. I suppose it would have been nice if they could even have made like a little a uh, little gun, a little shovel out of 3D yeah. plastic. I wonder, just wondered how much that would have actually... Part of me thinks to... that there might have been in the Kickstarter version, perhaps. Again, I still never looked at the Kickstarter page because I don't want to know all the stuff that I missed out on. Hmm. But I knowing Awaken to... Rounds and how much they deluxify their Kickstarters... Because even just like the food could have been a little coffee pot a little can, can a, soup. a soup or something like that or even yeah. the meds could have been like a little medicine box or a little tablet form just with meds written on it yeah because they shaped the to cardboard think. tokens nicely to fit it like the meds is the cross, a cross yeah and the cigarette is a long thin rectangle so i would guess possibly in in the in the kickstarter edition they probably did deluxify all the components but obviously for a retail version that that would just make the cost too prohibitive um i love the book of scripts mm. i think that's great again if you've seen any of my footage you know i love uh, sort of choose your own fighting fantasy and it has that sort of feel to it i think anyway i don't know what you did most of the reading mm. out of it so it was just i mean how it's written is lovely yeah um, yeah the yeah, content's just not content. lovely but yeah but no. <laughs> how it's written is really how nice. it's written is really nice i did say how it's written i know the content. I, I was agreeing with um it. yeah but to find the little next section you don't know what's coming up until you find the right number in the right book it is like the final fighting fantasy book yeah, yeah yeah and obviously if, nice if you're not a fan of the book of scripts, there is an app where you just type in the number that you're directed to and it will read it out for you. And I think the app also has a lot picking game in it. And I think also when you're exploring and in the game, if you saw any of the gameplay, we had to increase the noise marker and roll for the noise. Mm. I think in the app, it actually like listens to how much noise you're making. So when you're talking to each other, you've got to be relatively quiet. Or otherwise the phone will hear you and say, oh, someone's overheard you, a resident's coming. Uh, mm. But obviously we haven't tried that because we were using the phones for recording. So yeah. that's something we'll have to try at a later date. Accessibility. Uh, it's a definitely adult. <laughs> yes, yeah, it's not for kids, this one. Uh, definitely 18 definitely. plus, I would say. Even sensitive adults, I wouldn't suggest really playing this game as such. Yeah, you've got to go into it with the right mindset. If you, if, if you just want to have fun or a relaxy, cheery game, this is not, not for it. you. This, no. is not, this is all about weighty decisions and gut punches and almost emotional trauma, really. Um, in terms of learning the game, I think for the most part it's easy to learn. You say this, the storyline makes you follow a set yeah. path anyway um i think it's more the anticipation of oh i don't know how this 
event or this card that I'm going to choose or this thing I'm going to have to do is going to affect the rest of the story. Yeah, I think we had that issue right at the very beginning in episode one where we had to pick a location mm. and we had no idea what these numbers by the side meant and we picked what I think we went to the furthest away which gave us the lowest mm. number of exploration mm. cards yeah the one time we went scavenging with two people yeah and we ended up with not very much stuff, so did we? no and the game didn't explain to you or the rules didn't explain the exploration card, the relevance of that number until after we'd made the decision, which was one little niggle I had really. But for the most part, I mean, we went in, the whole point of this was to see how it was to learn the game without reading the rule book because they, it's some it's sort of a boast they yeah. have that you don't need to. And, you know, they're right for the most part. They're, normally, I would have read a rule book two or three times and watched a watch it played video before we get anything to the table. And for this, we just dove straight in. And for the most part, I think we got, it was easy enough to pick up. I yeah, think they also say that is to provoke the same atmosphere people would have felt anyway. Yeah. Of not knowing. Yeah, I think that's a really good point. It's a really good pick up for me because that's not something I would have thought about. But yeah, it, it does evoke that uncertainty and almost building tension that, mm. to sort of replicate the feeling of being in a war zone, I guess. Yeah, that's a really clever way of looking at it. And mm. Yeah, I like that. Um, in terms of setting it up and putting it away... Which I was doing quite a bit of, wasn't I? But the little yes. um, special little map... The save sheet. save sheet that they give you is really helpful. Definitely. It was a really good save. So there there. was no way I was going to remember where every single card was placed, whether it's a closed door or a rubble in the right place, whether we had Mm -hmm. entered that one or not. So obviously just spending a couple of minutes at the end of your chapter, if that's where you've stopped, and writing it on the save sheet, and then just noting down which areas you've not yet been in, um, what illnesses and misery and yeah, yeah. fatigue each person was on and what particular additional cards you had made it much easier to then set up and it was nice and made sure the cards we were using were kept in a separate bag so then it was easier to re-put them back on the board yeah. the next time. They have the save bag and the waste bag yeah. which I thoroughly enjoyed and I'm not sure, <laughs> not sure why I enjoyed so much. Uh, but even just in terms of the standard setup and tear down time, it's it's five ten minutes, yeah. maybe at most. Whereas a lot of other games can be a lot longer than that, so there's no there's no fiddly pieces to put together to make that anything three D. It is basically put the card pack on the right space, make sure you've got your characters and their minis, and make sure what's ever in the storage is in the storage, and that's basically yeah, it. Exactly. Isn't it? And, I mean, conversely to that, the price point is probably a hurdle, because I think it is a relative... What, you, what I did think, you spend Well, we got it with the expansions, and with the expansions it was about 130. I think it was about 70, 70 or 80 to get just the base game. But you've had difficulty. We had to... Yeah, that I? was... I mean, this copy I think we bought from Holland. I think it was from a shop in Holland online, because there is... Just completely sold out in the UK, other than extortionate prices on eBay, perhaps. Mm. Um, so getting hold of it is a big issue. And that's probably the biggest hurdle for the accessibility, is yeah. just getting a copy of the game, I think. And particularly now, with obviously any customs charges, if anybody's trying to get this game from abroad... Yeah, that's the capacity. VAT for UK backers, yeah. you're going to be paying an extra fee, which is not fun. It certainly added to my costs in the last yes, few months. Definitely. <laughs> uh, but on to replayability. And there is absolutely loads. It's almost endless, I think. Well, as you said, we only played with three characters. There's 12 characters in total. Um, obviously, depending on how many people you play with, you have more characters. I think you always okay, start with three, three, but so one can you can have a fourth character join. Have one join, they visit you 
Right, so I don't think we lasted long enough for that to happen. So. Um, but yeah, every decision is going to give a different gameplay. Yeah. Yeah, even just exploring the house is going to be different. Every and obviously, time, yeah. as we've seen with the board, there's two different modes for that. We have the this sort of advanced house and the one we played, which was the basic one. There's three different setup scenarios in the box. Yeah. Uh, You've got your extent, your expansions to go with this as well. Well, they're upstairs, yeah. I mean, that's, that's a huge amount of extra content up there. But even just with the base game, the replayability is so high, I think. And yeah, just I don't think you'll ever be in a position where two games are the same because you're always going to be making different decisions mm -hmm. and you're always going to have different objectives and different events and, you know, the, the the role of the dice to determine the it's outcome different. of yeah. events is going to be different. The locations you have is going to be different and that's going to impact the numbers on the scripts yeah. and the colours. So it is a huge amount of replayability. There's so much variables. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. you're just going to end up with a completely different game every single time. Yeah. So a big win on replayability. Although it does have a high price point, you're getting a lot of game for that I think and so finally on to the gameplay and you sort of covered some of this already in terms of it isn't for everyone mm -hmm. mm. no as I was saying to you earlier you can see your mother playing this because no she would find it too depressing and, and just not want to carry on I think yeah um, she wouldn't want to make the decisions even though it is just a game but the moral decisions that you have to make really way on your conscience mm -hmm. to to make a good choice to make the better decision will put your character sometimes in a lot of danger you know if you're say that time we were just out by uh, amelia out by herself yeah how could she help a girl who's surrounded by three guys yeah because instinctually you want to help, help. Yeah. but and there was no way she would have got herself potentially wounded or killed and raped as well and, and every, yeah so I mean it's haunting it it really is utterly depressing but in the same way that watching a haunting documentary yeah. or or reading a, a uh, depressing yeah. book or like a true story like I guess the child called it is probably the famous mm. A story of horrendous abuse and things and yeah it's not fun to read but you do it anyway because it's, it's the emotion the feeling and everything that comes with it and this does a fantastic job of conveying those negative emotions mm -hmm. um, the, my one slight negative is maybe it's possibly a bit too difficult I mean, I don't really see a need for an advanced side of the board, considering how hard the standard side mm. of the board gameplay is. Um, yeah, unless we did something radically wrong, we didn't even get to finish the game because all of our characters died on the second chapter. At the start of chapter two, yeah. yeah. I mean, I think we did do something wrong with the objectives and that I think we shouldn't have drawn an objective at that point. We should have already been working towards it. So we did something wrong there. And we did make some errors in resource management when we should have done a board up to prevent it, to avoid a night raid, but we made the heater instead. Mm -hmm. And so we made some poor decisions in terms of managing our equipment. But I don't think we made any massive rule errors, but I think it's just a very hard game. And maybe just tweaking that down a little bit would just make it mm -hmm. a bit more accessible. Because you do want to help your people survive yeah the depressing that all of our characters died you become quite attached to these little mini characters and we've already worked out their personalities and likes yeah. and dislikes well they have their little things their... like amelia and marin like coffee and they would get miserable if they didn't have it and uh marco would get upset if his friends were hungry and yeah they have their backstory and everything that comes with it and they do a real good job of developing that attachment to to those characters yeah yeah um but yeah if like me you love weighty decisions i mean it is life or death it's mm -hmm. 
you've got the resource management, which is sort of an afterthought, but it is such fine margins. You have to be ultra precise with everything. Mm. Um, and I, as we already mentioned, we already made some errors with that. But in terms of a narrative journey that a board game can present, it's probably the first one of these we've played. Mm. And I think it is phenomenal. And I've played the video game, and if I was to recommend one, I would say get the board game every time. I love the tone of the video game, but I found the controls for the combat were horrendous and just unplayable, and I, had, I couldn't carry on once it got to a combat situation. Whereas this takes everything that I loved about the video game in terms of the feeling and the atmosphere and the narrative and distills it into a board game. And yeah, I couldn't recommend it highly enough, to be honest. I mean, you haven't played the video game, no. so I don't know how, if you feel differently. No, well, I don't have anything to compare it to, so... I no, don't know. but in terms of your feeling on the gameplay that you've experienced, is it a game that you like? Is it a game that you want to play? Is it... I would like to play it again. Mm -hmm. But I would think about... I think it's more the, oh my god, I've got to go in and make those decisions again with those characters, and it's like going, oh my god, I've got to be ready to and be in the right frame of mind to almost want to Absolutely. do that with these guys. It's not yeah. something I can just, yeah, pick up and go, oh yeah, let's have a quick game of this or a quick game of that. This is not a quick game. <laughs> no, no, I mean, we played it over, well, three and a fraction of videos. Played. And we only got to chapter two, yeah. so, so it, it, it is a long It's game. a game that's going to take four or five hours to play through. Yeah. And although the player count does say one to six, I think the higher your player count is, the worse that's going to get. Cause You're going to be arguing about what decisions to make yeah. for what people. I mean, I know they say whoever's holding the journal has the final decision, but I don't see any value in adding more people. If anything, I would say this game is probably going to be best as a solo game. Certainly no more than two. I mean... It, you could stretch it to three and say, okay, one person has each one With character. Mm. But even then, when you're doing the exploration, it's kind of a solo experience when you're turning over cards. and Yeah, I guess it's something we could, we could try. Once yeah. we're back into people coming to our house and being able to tr give this a go. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I would certainly be interested to try it just on my own anyway when I'm free at some point that might be something I do later on the channel perhaps but yeah I absolutely love this game and obviously coming off the back of a video I did a couple of months ago where I asked why are there no great video game adaptations mm -hmm. and this, is one of them. this absolutely is a great video game adaptation I think it actually surpasses the video game and obviously I'll link that video down below because that isn't saying the thing that I got a lot of pushback on that video because people just saw the title and thought I was hating on all video game adaptations when it was a, asking a question about why they aren't particularly highly rated on Board Game Geek because this one at the time wasn't in the top 150. I think it's crept into the top 150 now. Oh, so it won't even be on your poster? To... No, it's not. It's oh. not on my top 100 poster. And I think it oh. deserves to be. I think it is phenomenal as a narrative if you care about narrative this is outstanding and even in video games i said in my introduction video video games for me it was all about the story and the characters and investing in it and i was hoping that would in these characters a lot, right? yeah i was hoping that would transfer nicely to the board game world and that's why i bought so many awakened round games off the promise of the narrative they deliver mm -hmm. And this absolutely delivered. So for me, it's a 9.5 out of 10. Probably lost that 0.5 just because the difficulty is a bit too high. But again, that is thematic with, I guess, trying to survive in a war zone. Mm. But do you have anything, any other thoughts you want to share? I don't think so. No? no. Okay. Uh, well, we'll leave it there. And again, I hope you enjoyed the series on this war of mine. And I hope you join us again soon. So thank you for watching. Look after yourself and stay safe. Have a good one. Bye-bye now. Bye.